another episode of Let's Make Work Happen. I'm Jennifer Cannell, and today I'm happy to welcome Tara Malone, Senior Director of Corporate HR at Dassault Falcom Jet. Hi, Tara. How are you doing today? Good. Good morning, Jennifer. So nice to be here with you. Thank you for inviting me. Well, we have a lot to talk about, but first I want to kind of get to know you a little bit. Can you tell us a little bit about your background? How long have you been in the mobility industry and with Dassault? Certainly. I've been with Dassault coming on my third year anniversary. However, I have we'll say 10 times a little more of that experience in the human resources world and varying functions. And being a jack of all trades in HR, I've gotten pulled recently into the mobility function because we did not have a mobility function here at Desso until I joined. So with the assistance of Weikert, we are able to now have a mobility program in place for our employees who are being asked to relocate. Well, that must have come in handy, kind of being a jack of all trades in your previous experience, because oftentimes people don't realize how much goes into building a mobility program. So hopefully that helps you to kind of expedite building that program and getting it off the ground. Yes, um, it was definitely, sorry to cut you off. It was definitely oh. a unique experience, one that Weikert really helped us tremendously in crafting. Yeah. And something we're finding all the time is that mobility is oftentimes only one facet of what HR is trying to manage under the umbrella of, of what they're doing. But oftentimes you're the one who understands how all the pieces work together. So with that in mind, can you tell us a little bit about Dassault and the mobility program that you manage? Certainly. So Dassault is the manufacturer of business jets, the finest jets in the world called the Falcon. We have two new models that are coming out, our 6X and our 10X. So we are rapidly staffing up to be able to fill all of the pre-orders that we have for these jets. And the culture of Dassault is really commitment to excellence, quality, and maintaining the highest standards of safety and ethics, which is incredibly important to us. Wow. And so what kind of mobility programs, how do you move people? Do they tend to go within the U.S. or all over the world? What do you Certainly. Do? So both. We have our parent company, Dasso Aviation, is located in France. And we do have many of our engineers coming over to our facilities in the United States. Our headquarters is located in Teterboro, New Jersey. But our main manufacturing facility is in Little Rock, Arkansas. And we are growing by leaps and bounds there. So we've been relocating some folks internationally from France to Little Rock. We're also building out a new flagship maintenance facility in Melbourne, Florida, that will eventually host about 450 employees. So we're also relocating some of our key staff members on the maintenance side to that facility for long range domestic moves. And then we also hire in new staff and offer relocation to staff that's joining us for the first time. Wow. I mean, that's exciting. It's it's also pretty ambitious. I mean, so that's a really fast growth. I did take a peek at the website and I encourage everybody to look at it because it's I'll say it, it's pretty cool what you guys do there. And I read DFJ's commitment that owning and flying a Falcon entitles you to the highest levels of safety, reliability, performance, and efficiency without compromise. And that kind of blew me away. That, that must take some talented and driven colleague. So you're talking a little bit about the culture at, at DFJ. Can you tell us a little bit about the typical employee who would go on an assignment, the Certainly. level of ex expertise they're looking for when they're moving? We we employ the highest level of qualified technicians and engineers on our staff and we find that our staff tends not to leave it's not uncommon for us to have employees that are here more than 30 or 40 years which sounds astonishing in today's marketplace but we also have staff that are joining us for the first time from many different backgrounds many different cultures and new to the organization which helps fuel creativity and ensure that we are providing the best experience to our falcon operators oh well, that's amazing and you know if they're new coming into so this is their first impression of the company, and it must be highly competitive market to, to get that kind of talent in the door. Um, yes, extremely. But, we um, There is a global shortage for talent, particularly in the engineering as well as in the technician space for maintaining all types of aircraft. So it is 
very challenging and employees have their choice of where to work. So we want to make sure that we are providing the best employee experience possible. So that brings us to your recent implementation of technology. And that's kind of what I wanted to talk about today is, is technology, because so much of it is really the foundation of your business, you know, without it, that the precision behind the jets and, and what people come to expect when they're from a customer experience, all the way up to what, how the employees are working. I'm sure they're expecting that level of service and that kind of technology behind the experience to support them. So when you are looking at different types of, you know, uh, solutions, when you're implementing your program, what was important to you when it came to finding and assessing that solution to managing mobility for you? Certainly. I will say before connecting with Weikert and when we were searching for someone to partner with to help us really solve for this, this challenge that we were having, we were looking for expertise as well as the ability to easily manage the candidates that are receiving the mobility as a benefit, as well as tracking our costs, tracking metrics by unit. And we just found that Weikert was extremely experienced in being able to provide both self-service options to employees, as well as assisted support to the employees that are relocating and can easily show us on our dashboard through the Weikert Go at any given time, what is my spend? How many candidates do we have in progress? Where are they in progress? Have they completed their move? Any and all information that we want is literally at the click of a, of a mouse. And it's been so easy to navigate and also to train our varying HR staff that are located throughout our different facilities. So I'm located in Teterboro, but it was extremely easy to implement and educate our colleagues that sit in Little Rock or sit down in Melbourne who have more recently joined the company on the tool as well, which made it extremely useful to, to us from an HR and mobility perspective. Yeah, and you, you brought up a great point because, you know, you have employees everywhere and to have a tool that's intuitive is very important, especially as workforces are changing everywhere and the fact that you need them to have that at their fingertips. It has to be ready. They have to be able to understand it immediately, but also it has to be scalable as you grow, right? I mean, you're not going to be able to train every single person. So you want basically by word of mouth, people to be able to rely on each other or be able to go directly into the system and just understand how it's going to work um, yes. just the way they would with anything else at Deso. And it is very intuitive, the system. However, our Weikert Go implementation team also did help to design it, training for the HR professional or mobility professional, as well as brochures that we are able to share with our folks that are eligible for the various relocation programs. So everything mm -hmm. from helping us to design the program to actually creating the communication materials was handled by Weikert. And it was done extremely quickly. I think we implemented in record time under, I want to say, 45 days. Ah, oh, wow. 45 days. Yeah, so, it was so extremely quick. That was quick. So uh, we're going to touch on that a little bit later because that's getting almost getting away from the technology a little bit. And I want to save that one because I want to ask you a little bit, would you mind giving us a little bit of the before and after? What was it like before you implemented the it technology solution? We did not know what we were doing. We were kind of using Google or other internet search to try to maybe guesstimate, okay, somebody's moving from Reno to Melbourne. They have a family of four. They have two cars and, you know, a, a dog and selling a house for this much and they're moving to this area. And we were trying to figure this out all on our own without any expertise and come up with a lump sum check and basically handed it to the employee with no additional support and said, okay, good luck. We'll see you when you get to Melbourne. And then we would get back strips of paper and receipts that someone in HR had to then tabulate and hand to payroll to be processed and check cut to the employee and taxes figured out appropriately. Now we literally log into the Weicker Go portal. We put in a couple of pieces of basic information. Who's the person that's relocating? What's their contact information? What benefit are they getting? And if we have any additional information about their demographics, we will share that as well. Like if they're a family or single homeowner and 
that's it. Weikert handles it from there within typically within 24 hours, but on the outside 48, if it's a weekend, they will contact the individual and walk them through step by step. Here's the benefit. Here are resources to support you, whether it be where to purchase your boxes or here's who can help you with the move. Everything from white glove packing services and moving at certain levels to discounts on, let's say, people who prefer to move themselves, throw everything in a, in a for lack of a better term, a U-Haul and, and bring it themselves. Weicker walks them through step by step. On the back end from payroll, we get um, an invoice weekly. We pay the invoice and we get a report monthly that goes to payroll to track the taxes appropriately. And that's it. It's one stop shop from our perspective. As you implemented the technology, you told us a lot about some of the things that were particularly helpful. Were there any surprises? I think there was a shocking realization of how much money we were spending on relocation because each department really pays for their own relocation. It hits their individual budgets. So from a corporate perspective, it wasn't something that we focused on. And we quite frankly weren't sure if we were getting the best bang for our buck, right? We didn't know who we were overpaying and maybe they were getting a windfall and we didn't know who we were kind of shorting because we didn't have expertise to what that move would truly cost. This process, in addition to making it easier to budget and calculate the move because all of the statistics and the costing is there daily at the, at the click of a mouse, but it also makes the budgeting that much easier and we're able to track it a lot better and ensure the dollars being spent are being done in a better way. Yeah, I can, I can only imagine in a year's time with that data, what you're going to be able to tell leadership and what you're going to be able to do with it. So, you know, that's, that's a significant obstacle. You're not alone. I heard quite often from companies, you know, is the spend, being able to corral that spend and also the compliance aspect is, you know, people are doing different things. There's there's the aspect of the policy compliance because people are doing different things and setting precedents if somebody is approved for something and or something got through that shouldn't have. How did you address it as far as, you know, the, the losing control of the spend? It's actually, I think, better controlled now because mm -hmm. previously it really depended which HR I'll say recruiter was handling the onboarding and the, the processing of that person's relocation. And although we did have a very loosely defined policy previously, we were able to put in a very robust policy with Weikert and Weikert is managing compliance with that policy through their tools and through their technology. So it just helps us from that perspective. They even manage the signing of the repayment agreement if somebody were to leave. So that for us, it just ensures that we're a hundred percent in compliance and takes a lot of the burden off of the very busy and small HR team. Right. Right. And that's the goal, right? To free up their time to do more of what they're really there for and what they're most skilled at. And that's uh, working directly with the employees and, and the different businesses on, yes. on the strategy behind the, the use of the program. So we, you know, we discussed the role in technology in improving the ongoing administration of mobility, but going back to the beginning, I, I kind of heard something else. Does this tie directly or indirectly to being able to recruit that high level of talent that there's a shortage behind and that's so critical that's to your business? A hundred percent. Absolutely. Especially in today's real estate market with the changing interest rate and the price of housing, it really makes or breaks, quite frankly, the offer in many cases. The assistance also around helping spouses relocate, giving them resources to help find their career, helping find schooling for the children, getting acclimated to the area, in particular for our folks coming into the country for the first time. It's, it's quite the cultural shock coming from France to Little Rock, Arkansas, or to New Jersey. It's just a, a change that oftentimes when we were doing it in-house, we weren't able to provide that level of support and acclimation. You know, things like, okay, how do I get my cable turned on? These are questions that 
the Weicker professionals are really skilled and able to answer and to guide them to the, a plethora of resources that are available to the employee from the website. So it has definitely improved our ability to recruit. And we had some folks that actually had previously been on the fence that we've been able to kind of pull over and, and get down to Melbourne as a result, which is great. That's good to hear. So uh, we touched upon earlier, I said I was gonna get back to it about the technology versus the human component of relocation. Implementing technology, was the goal ever to fully replace the human aspect of it? And in your opinion, can it replace most of that, the human aspect of it, people reaching out? Do people really want a full technology solution, self-serve? I think it depends on the individual. There are some people that are more comfortable with a do-it-yourself approach, but when it comes to relocating your family and your home, there are just some things that you really want to engage with an individual on and, and hear that reassuring voice on the other end. Moving is one of the most stressful things you will ever go through. I think it's right up there with, you know, death and divorce that you will ever go through in your life. And to anybody who's had to relocate, you know, so as I said, some of our employees are with us 30, 40 years. They're in their homes 30, 40 years. So to ask them to like, okay, pack everything up now, completely move away from your family, your friends, your support system, and help us build this new facility, that's a tremendous ask. And we had to make it as smooth and, and seamless as possible from a relocation perspective for them. And Weikert has definitely succeeded in helping us do that. Yeah. I say all the time that, you know, self-service does not mean, you know, you're on your own. Self-selection certainly doesn't mean self-service. You're always going to need somebody at some point, um, even if it's behind the scenes, to be able to help you make choices and just knowing that there's somebody there if you need to reach out on, on a weekend or, or to ask a question about, you know, being in a new area. That's for sure. Absolutely. One of the biggest questions we got about the Florida area was the price of the flood insurance. That was like one where they definitely wanted a person to speak to, to guide them through kind of that process. And the relocation specialists were able to put them in contact with local like realtors in the area who could really explain the nuances of the different areas, what was flood zone, what wasn't flood zone, guide them on what to expect as far as cost for insurance and things like that. So there, are, every situation is unique and that's where the technology is fantastic for those who like the do-it-yourself approach, like, oh, here's a list of resources, here's a list of where I can get my gas or my electric from. That's great, that's easy, but when it comes to other situations wanting to understand, oh, what's the impact now to my, the mortgage rate is at this, but I was at that. What does that mean as far as the amount of house I can afford? Again, having that personal one-on-one -on -one contact is always so important as well. Yeah, and that's a great example because that's where I think the mature relocation program really is the best defense for somebody who is, you know, at risk for maybe deciding whether to go to another, another program or to another employer is they need that, not necessarily hand holding, but they, a lot of people that you can go online and you can get information, but they need it to be meaningful to them. They want to have that opportunity to ask the questions of how does this apply to my situation? particularly when they're finding the right home. Flood insurance, I think a lot of us have heard about what's happening in that area, but it's very different when you're looking at a two-bedroom versus a four-bedroom home, or you're bringing your family, or you're moving as a single in, in different locations within that state. So that's a yes. great example. Thank you. The other um, um, area where they really wanted a lot of interaction was around the school systems. And uh, because different areas have different school systems and what to know, what to expect. And that can also, if you find that maybe the public school system in the area isn't meeting your needs going forward, then that might be an additional expense that they need to account for if they plan to put their kids in private school. So that's, again, where they really want to have that one-on-one -on -one interaction and get referred to a quality realtor in the area who can help support them during the, the move as well. Sure, and that's where the RMC can certainly refer them out to somebody, even if it's not part of their program. We certainly have those kind of contacts and referrals yes. where we can, we can provide those to people, which is great. So do you have any advice for somebody who they're looking to implement a technology, but 
I mean, companies, I always refer to the statistic that I heard that large companies have over 75 to 80 systems within their company. And I know that's that's a rough number. Not everybody has that many, and I'm sure they're not all HR related, but I'm sure there's a few. You you work with a number of systems within Deso. Somebody who's on the fence and they, they don't have, do I have to implement another technology and train people? What kind of advice would you give to them? What, what should they be mindful of, do you think? They should be mindful. Number one, know that you don't have to maintain this technology. This is outsourced technology. You do have to train your staff on how to use it. The most difficult part for us was really getting your login and your password and showing them here's how how you log in. Beyond that, it was as simple as going to Amazon and, and ordering whatever you order every day to be delivered to your door. It was pretty self-sufficient and the Weikert implementation team walked us through every single step of the way. I think the biggest time constraint on my end was spent with our IT department on trying to get the Weikert emails added to our cleared or approved whitelist that for the email addresses, because we have a pretty big lockdown on what websites you can use. And so th that was the biggest time frame was I just needed to contact IT to get it added as a valid IP address, I think is the correct terminology. Beyond that, Weikert really did everything. They walked us through what's in a typical program. They discussed our needs with us. They consulted with us and made some recommendations on how to structure certain things to best meet our needs and our budget. And we reviewed the, the program, got it approved. And then, as I said, they implemented in record time for us because we wow. did need it in place for this move to Melbourne. And um, okay, I can't say enough, enough good things about it. It's been fantastic. That's great. And the support We've had consistency. So there was a really nice handoff as well from the implementation team and partner that we had to the ongoing team. So any questions or if I need to add a new user that's going on, we get immediate support from, from our contacts. And we have two that we reach out to. So if one is unavailable, the other responds right away. So it's been, I have to say, the ongoing support has been outstanding. Oh, that's great. That's great. And I, I heard in there you said consistency, and I think that's something that people can be mindful of is when they're looking at technologies that they're implementing for any aspect of mobility is, is you want to focus on what is the goal of the technology? Is it to make things faster? Is it to remove redundancies in the process? If there's a cost add to putting in the technology, if there's any training costs or anything, of course, you want to be mindful of that. But if the at the end of the day, the long-term goal is to drive consistency in the process, that I typically will cascade into the other benefits. It'll long term, you'll have reduced costs and then more compliance and hopefully happier employees. So and building that employer brand. Definitely. So I know I know that kind of brings us to the end. So we have one final question. It's the question we ask at the end of every one of these sessions. So Tara, how do you make work happen at the so? I help make work happen by making sure that we remove every obstacle that we can from our employees so that they can focus on our customers and doing their jobs. And that ranges from hiring to setting HR policy to being able to ensure that they have a wonderful experience when we ask them to relocate on our behalf. And so Thank you for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. And thank you for helping us make work happen. Oh, thank you. Well, I know we're at the end and uh, thank you, Tara. I do appreciate your time. And it does help to hear firsthand what matters in technology to companies. So I know that people listening and, and watching will, will really benefit from this. They're going to get a lot of helpful tips from it. So I want to thank everyone for watching. And um, of course, please hit the subscribe button um, so that you don't miss any other future episodes. Hopefully we'll see you next time.